open and receptive to your word, O God. It seems like that's the bottom line of this passage. May we not only hear, but really listen to what you are saying by taking it into our hearts. May we have solid roots and a foundation in good soil. In the parable, seeds fall on the path, rocky ground, thorns, and good soil. Jesus interprets each group of seeds as a different response to hearing God's word. This parable in Matthew is one of the few parables that Jesus actually explains. We aren't scratching our head to find meaning. It's all there. You should be good soil. Sermon done. We can go home. <laughs> Not so fast. You'd miss the point. There is more. The focus is on good soil, something we all yearn to be for ourselves and for others. I have some questions. First of all, how does good soil happen? How do we listen so as to truly hear? And second of all, it is also about all soils and all our souls. In reality, aren't we sometimes a mix of all the soils and sometimes we may be totally dry or rocky, judgmental, doubtful, selfish, distracted? And we can be very judgmental and critical when these dry and rocky parts of ourselves come to the surface. But don't fret. The other part of the message is the faith and determination of the sower. The sower spreads seeds with reckless abandon and will keep sowing again and again. Will not give up on us, will always keep trying. God will keep sowing. Maybe we can find ourselves a good place to be planted. And God doesn't plant in selective rows. Rather, the sower is a scatterer. And that's how the seeds and we end up everywhere. The seed, once planted, does its job. And we, the various soils, good and otherwise, spread the word according to our capabilities. Some days not, we're exhausted and dry. And during the times of good soil, the word is spread in multiples. It's never the same because we're never the same. We're always in flux. This passage invites us to be introspective, to reflect on questions we have, to be curious. This is exemplified by the poet Mary Oliver in her poem titled, The Gardener. Have I lived enough? Have I loved enough? Have I considered right action enough? Have I come to any conclusion? Have I experienced happiness with sufficient gratitude? Have I endured loneliness with grace? I say this, or perhaps I'm just thinking it. Actually, I probably think too much. Then I step out into the garden, where the gardener, who is said to be a simple man, is tending his children, the roses. The parable and the poem appealed to me because, as many of you know, I'm an avid gardener. And on my resume, you would read that I specialize in native and deer-resistant shrubs and perennials. Good luck with that, right? Mm. I keep trying to plant the right flower, tree, or bush in a place where the least damage will occur. I nurture and try to protect the plantings. And they get eaten, and I have to plant again or move the decimated foliage, or try something else. And what does this have to do with the price of eggs and good soil, you may ask? Well, you do have to know the soil, but also the cultivation requirements. And beware the horned one who snatches away the unsuspecting hosta or azalea bud. It's persistence. I learn the specialty through trial and error continually spreading seed and trying again. 
And many times I had to move things to the right places to change the soil. The picture on the front cover of the bulletin is a Westport community garden. I don't know if you've been up there. There are various plots, rather orderly. But the plantings aren't necessarily orderly. They can be messy. And perhaps the path's a bit weedy. Kind of like us. But it's beautiful. And there are many different types of soils and conditions across many different plots. There are shady parts, dry parts, sudden parts, and lean parts. And vegetables, for the most part, require full sun, or at least part sun, where you can grow green vegetables, lettuces, and the like. So it's no use to try to grow vegetables in the shade or wet. It won't work. The dictum of where you grow where you are planted doesn't hold water. Rather, plant yourself where you can grow. Change the soil conditions. Transform the soil for what is needed to thrive and grow. At the community garden, folks worked hard to weed, water, and augment the soil with compost to nurture their seedlings. The soil was tilled, the soil was amended, and one person knew that you had to put poles up to support the beans. And another person saw that and did the same. Someone thought it was a good idea to have birds. Someone else brought in a birdhouse. And so on. A community of gardeners with individual gifts and goals and soils, yet symbiotically working together and nurturing the other. To be planted where you can grow. And what is your soil now? Do you need some amendments? Do you need someone to extend an open hand or an open heart to feed you nutrients? Are you, are you the good soil for another? I say, let's be the compost for one another, to offer support if you see someone leaning over, to offer a climbing ladder as you see someone reaching for the sun. Help them, show them the way to climb higher encourage and motivate the growth of deep roots. And listen. Listen attentively to the seeds of love and compassion spread to you. Amen.